Well, good morning, A New Day Church. Good afternoon to some on the East Coast, the very wet and soggy East Coast. Uh, Hurricane Debbie is still uh, <laughs> leaving her footprint all over the place, so uh, pretty wet and uh, soaked. The East Coast, especially the Carolinas, man, we got hit pretty good. Lots of rain down here. So anyway, uh, Pastor Tom, it is good to talk with all of you again. Uh, Kim and I love you all so much. Got to say um, hello to the great senior pastors of A New Day Church, Pastor Mark and Carmen. Thank you so much for the opportunity that you give us to teach, and uh, we're so grateful to you guys. And remember, everybody, A New Day Church is a church, church without walls, man. We are all over the place. So we're here in North Carolina. Uh, we have a hub there in Washington State. Uh, we've got a, a new church being a, a planted and opened up in uh, Pakistan, believe it or not and Oaxaca, so we're everywhere. We've got a footprint, guys, And but the states, we love to pray, and you'll know, I'm going to be speaking on prayer today, but Monday and Wednesday nights, we pray, and we would love if you would join us uh, Mondays and Wednesdays, Monday from North Carolina, Wednesday from the great Pacific Northwest. Uh, you'll see the times. They'll be available. Pray with us. Um, if you have a something that you need prayed for, we will pray for you as a corporate group, as a and from all over the country. We have people praying from all kinds of different states. So, uh, so make it a plan. Join us, would you, on Monday and Wednesday nights. A New Day Church prays. We live on Facebook. We're also on Rumble and uh, on YouTube. So it will be absolutely worth your time. Okay. All right. There it is. There's the opening. Um, I was listening to a street pastor, uh, somebody I respect very, very much, um, and he said something that really resonated with me, and I wanted to share it with you guys today. Uh, so he looks at prayer um, like this, like uh, four simple words, he said, no, slow, grow, and go. Seems easy enough. No, slow, grow, and go. But as I listened to the rationale, to his rationale for these words, I thought he was right on the money. I really did. A New Day Church, I always say this, is a church without walls. We're a church that prays a lot. You know, Monday, Wednesday, and I just said that. So, um, you know, make sure you definitely pray. But, but we have experienced in that time, right, wonderful answers to prayer. We've heard God's miracles happening for people we pray for. We've seen it. We've also found that we have to wait, you know, sometimes for a long time, if at all in some cases. And sometimes it seems the answers just don't happen, especially in the way that we think that the answers should happen. So, you know, remember, God is not a big, you know, slot machine in the sky, okay? <laughs> he loves us and he wants the very, very best for us. And if that means that I never accumulate a big pile of wealth, well, I'm going to have to be okay with that. I have to know, though, that God has called me to something else. Not that I would pray for money or gain anyway. So I, but I, so I decided I'm going to look at these four little words a little bit closer, because this is, this is clearly what this pastor has done. Um, and I think they'll resonate with you guys, too, a little bit. See, God is the ultimate judge. He knows where every hair on our head is. He knows all of our thoughts, probably before we even have one. <laughs> I read a scripture in Job, and actually, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it with you right now. But it really told me a lot about God. And I, so let me read that real quick. It's Job 34, and it's going to be verses 16 through 24. And it says this, If you have understanding, hear this. Listen to what I say. Can he who hates justice govern? Will you condemn the just and the mighty ones? Is he not the one who says to kings, you are worthless, and to nobles, you are wicked? Who shows no partiality to princes and does not favor the rich over the poor? For they are all the work of his hands. They die in an instant. In the middle of the night, the people are shaken and they pass away. The mighty are removed without human hand. His eyes are on the ways of men. He sees 
their every step. There is no dark place, no deep shadow where evildoers can hide. God has no need to examine men further that they should come before him for judgment. Wow. It is a little unnerving knowing that God has no need, by the way, for a trial concerning your life. He's seen it all. He sees everything. His eyes are on the ways of men. He sees their every step. There is no dark place, no deep shadow where evildoers can hide. So the Bible says, but let's turn that around a little bit. He sees all things. He knows all things, right? So he knows the delicate details of your life. God knows what you need before you ever know you need it. It makes me feel better knowing that bad people in this world will stand before God. They won't be able to say anything because it will all play out before them. He sees it all. There's no even need for a trial. There's no need for judgment. It's already going to be done. That's what the scripture just told us. So when we pray, we should pray with that in mind a little bit. He sees everything. Now, does it mean that we don't need to pray then? If, if he sees everything, he already knows what we need? That's crazy. We don't do that. That's crazy talk. God wants to talk with you. God wants to hear your voice. But more importantly, he wants you to hear his heart. How do, how do we do that? How do we do that? By reading his word. The words of God. The word of God is his voice. It's God's words. When you understand what God's word is telling you, it can change the way you pray. Your prayers won't be centered on you. They'll be centered on fulfilling the mission God has placed for you in this world. It will be centered on his will being done, not our will. God is good. We need to trust that statement. God is good. He loves us and wants the very best for us. So let me go back to those four words I started with. The know, slow, grow, and go. And when I say no, I'm using the word N-O. <laughs> Just for make sure everybody knows. So, um, okay. According to the Bible, by the way, God sometimes, believe it or not, has to say no. And he says, he says no to our prayers for probably a variety of different reasons. God knows best. God is in control of our lives and knows what he, we need. In 1 Chronicles chapter 28, God says no to King David. King David wanted to build the, the beautiful temple for God. King David loved God. But King David made a lot of mistakes. Okay? And God said no. He said no. It will not be you. It will be your son that builds that temple. God has a greater plan. He knows why he wants things done his way. God's no may be part of a larger plan then. God may say no because, honestly, our requests are a bit selfish. We need to remember there are times that God may say no to teach us that his grace is enough. And there's always God wanting to test our persistence. Hang in there. Are you going to keep praying even though you're not hearing anything? God may say no for a season to keep us praying. God knows what you can handle. He does. It's not wrong to feel disappointment when things don't go as planned. Your plans are not God's plans. So I recommend when God says no, well, first, trust God's goodness. Trust him, okay? Give him the benefit of the doubt. What do you think? <laughs> Second, examine your heart for any kind of sinful attitudes or actions that might be there. 
Consider all your motives for a request. Truly. The, the Bible is constantly telling us to test ourselves. And third, continue praying until we feel we've received God's final no. Okay? Just keep on praying. Keep going at it. Then this, this street passer uses the word slow. So I thought, wow, no is enough. I thought, okay, so now let's hear slow. Well, this was a hard one too. <laughs> God does not have the same time, you know, line as we, his people. God sits outside of time. And that is not exactly comprehensible <laughs> to us. He doesn't deal in time at all. You know, Pastor Ted always says, God doesn't wear a, a wristwatch. Well, he's right. There is no time associated with God. God lives outside of time. So our thoughts and expectations are oftentimes guided by time, where his are not. God's are not, in the slightest. We're in a hurry. He's not. Just check out the, check out the book of, uh, of John here. John chapter 11, and it's verse 4, and it said, when he heard this, he's talking about Jesus here, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so, this, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. So he's, he's, uh, Jesus is talking about um, healing Lazarus here, and Talk about going slow, <laughs> right? This one, Jesus tarries in this action long enough for Lazarus to actually die of this illness. But God had heard the prayers of his friends and his family. He knew his healing was going to be talked about for ages to come. God had a reason to go slow. Sometimes we get hit with terrible things for the glory of God to be revealed to your family, to your friends. And God has never promised that walking this walk of life out with him would be easy. It, he just didn't. So if your prayer life is moving slowly, examine yourself to see if it's more about, honestly, the pleasures of your life rather than truly the will of God. God is not a slot machine. So if we think God is moving slowly on answering prayer, examine. Examine your prayers. And by the way, I'm going to say it again. God is fully aware of all the petitions that we put before him. So slow down. Slow down. Make sure your expectations line up with God's word with whatever God says. As I said before, if you want to hear God's voice, well, you got to read his word. So keep that in mind. And check this out. This is Luke, again, uh, talk about being persistent. Luke 18. Luke 18, and it's going to be verses 1 through 5. This is, this is actually clever, I think. Jesus is talking again. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable. To show them that they should always pray and not give up. That's what it says. He said in a certain town there was a judge who, ne who neither feared God nor cared about men. I'm not sure what kind of judge he was, but he neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. Oh, so... For some time, he refused the judge. But finally, he said to himself, even though I don't fear God uh, and I don't care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. That's what it says. That's the parable. Jesus just said, this is the way we should always pray and not give up. <laughs> so if it's, if it's going slow, examine yourself first. Make sure your motives are pure, but keep going to God. Let's wear God out with our prayer life. Let's wear him out. <laughs> what do you think? 
You know, I know that uh, waiting for God can be a challenging part of our faith, but it can also help stretch our faith and bring about growth and change. God may delay things to, you know, redirect us by telling us to pray, maybe in a different direction or a different way to seek his will. God may slow us down so we can experience his love and his peace. Proverbs 21, 29 says, Wicked people bluff their way, but God's people think before they take a step. Isn't that good? So let's think before we take that step. Let's, let's think before we just throw it out there to God or get upset that he's not answering our prayers quickly enough. Trusting God often requires not knowing how God is going to accomplish what needs to be done and not knowing when he will do it. That's trust. I've heard it said that God is never late, but generally he isn't all that early either. So, <laughs> so slow down, everybody, okay? Pray and take a deep breath and wait. And just wait on God. This pastor also said our prayer time and our prayer lives should lead to uh, us to grow spiritually. And I think, I think God would, would liken this kind of growth to be like, the, you know, the, um, maybe like marks on a door frame. You know, when, you, when you're little <laughs> and your dad and your mom would place a little pencil mark where your head, the top of your head was. <laughs> and as you grew, that mark would get just a little higher and notch up and higher, higher up on the door frame. God wants you to grow in your walk with him. And I think many Christians, including myself for a while, believe that spiritual growth was mostly about like learning more information. I need, I need information. The truth is spiritual growth is not just knowing more about, about Jesus. Spiritual growth is not just doing more for Jesus. Spiritual growth is living more like Jesus. Living, living it out. God wants you to look and act like our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 John 2, 6 says, Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. We need to become more and more like Jesus. Prayer does that. Prayer is getting us there. Reading the word is getting us there. I believe our prayer life will be one of the ways we know we're growing. So when we, we stop asking for that Mercedes Benz out in the parking lot and start asking for our neighbor to find God, that's when we know we've made a small Inch forward, another notch on the door. <laughs> Hebrews 6, 1 says, Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity. See, there, and there's a whole host of reasons that uh, the writer of Hebrews says this, but we need to put aside now the, the elementary, the, the simple beginning teachings of Christ and get into the meat of the word. Let's find out what God really has in his word for us. We need to grow. We, we need to be prayerful and ask God for wisdom and discernment. I mean, pray it. Actually pray for that. The reason we all need to grow in Christ as believers is because even though our, our sins are forgiven and we are you know, now in a blessed covenant with God, our minds, I gotta say, have been you know, left in sort of the same condition. <laughs> Even though, you know, we, we know Christ as Lord and Savior, our minds maybe, you know, are the same as they were sort of before <laughs> we were saved by grace, by His grace through faith. So prayer can help us grow. One of the, one of the songs that we always sing talks about when we fight, we fight on our knees. I love that song. Well, there is a humility in prayer. If, if we're humble before God, he's going to lift us up, okay? So when we, look at, when, when we look at Scripture, we can see the new identity we have as children of God. We can see that we have received a new spirit, his spirit, okay? Our spiritual identity is different, but we still have the same minds 
and bodies as we did, you know, before we got we got saved. So we have to constantly renew our minds. That's what it's going to mean to grow. So we've talked about prayer. The three, three out of the four ways God wants us to look at prayer. The no and no, the slow and the grow. So the last one is go. Go. Oh, what, do you mean? what do you mean, Pastor Tom? What do you mean go? I mean go. That's what he said. Use your faith in the modern world. Use it. Don't be afraid anymore. Okay? Through prayer and again seeking the voice of God, we can go out into the world and we can tell people the truth. God wants the remnant brought to him. He wants them found. I believe we're called to share the wonders of God, the invisible nature with this world that desperately, desperately is in need of him. God has chosen to use us to reveal him to them. You know, that God has chosen us to reveal himself to them. That's, that's our job. Think about that for a second. God chose to use you to reveal him to a lost world. Yep, I'm talking about you. <laughs> I'm looking right at you. He filled us with the Spirit and empowered us to proclaim the good news of salvation and restore relationship with our Creator. That is awesome. I love Ephesians 2.10. Go to Ephesians 2.10. you got to read this scripture for yourself. It says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Isn't that crazy? That is, honestly, this is one of the coolest scriptures in the Bible. God prepared us in advance to do things, to do good works, it says. And we are his workmanship, God's workmanship. He's proud of his workmanship. He marvels at it. Have you ever, you know, honestly, have you ever looked at something that you made, maybe a, a painting or a drawing, or, or even if you, maybe you, you baked the most beautiful loaf of bread in the world, and you just sat there and you marveled at it? God looks at us that way. Isn't that cool? We were created in Christ Jesus to do good, the good, the works of God. And not because, you know, uh, we, you know, we think we'll be saved by works. No, we are, we are saved by grace. But the works of God come as a result of the love and the knowledge and the growth we've received being a Christian. In that growth I've been telling you about, God is teaching us. Believe it or not, it starts with prayer. Talking to God. So what does it mean to go? I thought, I thought Micah had an interesting uh, uh, scripture here for this. Go to Micah 6, 8. And he said, Micah chapter 6, verse 8. He, he has showed you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. That's pretty good advice right there. I think that sums up what it means to go with God, to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. So when we, so when we pray... I want you to think about these, these four little small words. No, slow, grow, and go. I believe if we can learn how to effectively pray, we will be an unstoppable force for good in this honestly dark and depraved world. The world shows us over and over again who it is, okay? We have to fight back, okay, with justice love, and mercy. We need to go into the world with the, with the word of God and show the darkness the light. God is light. And it starts with prayer, everybody.
It starts with praying, believing what you pray. We fight our battles on our knees. And sometimes the answer, and we have to be okay with it, to prayer is no. Sometimes, a lot of the times, God wants us to be, you know, to go slow, be patient. God also wants us to grow, to know him and know and recognize his voice. And then God wants us to go into the world with confidence and assurance, knowing the truth of the creator of the universe. You know, we all believe in the power of prayer. Let's see God's will be done and let our will be in the second position for a little while. What do you think? <laughs> God knows you. He created you. He sees all things you're going through. He sits outside of time. He can see it all. So put your trust in him. Trust in his goodness. We all have reason, you know, well, sorry, seasons, I should say, of prosperity. We have seasons of hardships, love, and failure. But what God walks beside us through it all. He's walking right next to us through it all. He knows before you ask him. So let's go to God's word and learn to hear, you know, the voice of our creator. Man, when we do, when we do that, all these things we deal with in life get easier and easier and easier. God is with us. If he is with us, who could be against us, right? All right. Pray those four little words in, well, with those in your mind. No slow, grow, and go. And I honestly think if we do that, if we start thinking in terms like that, our prayer life is going to get better and better uh, and more enriched. We're going to want to go to the Word. We're going to want to stay connected with God all the time. I think that's what's, honest to goodness, that can be what's missing in our lives. It's just talking to God and listening. Don't, don't do a quick dinner time prayer because you're hungry, okay? Talk, find some time. You know, people used to call them prayer closets, wherever you need to go to get to, get to a quiet place and talk with God. And we've got to be okay with a no. We've got to be okay with things not moving like we, slowly, slow. And then let it be something where, as we learn with, through prayer, we grow into the Christians God wants us to be, and then we go and we take that message to others. Hey, that's what I wanted to share with you today. This is Tom Gerges, all the way from the very soggy state of North Carolina. Uh, Kim and I just, I just want you to know, Kim and I love you all. We, we miss you all like crazy. Hey, do you like the new digs, by the way? This is our, my new office. Uh, it's our new studio for um, uh, doing prayer. We're going to be doing prayer from, live prayer, uh, Monday nights from here. And uh, also, I'll be teaching from here. So, appreciate all that. But this is a new, we've, we've got uh, a new setup in the house. So, we're doing really well. Hey, and remember, everybody, we're on uh, different platforms. We're on Rumble, uh, YouTube, and Facebook. Uh, Rumble, by the way, is killing it right now. So if you're out there on Rumble, give us a thumbs up, would you? Uh, we really appreciate it. And make sure you uh, become one of our followers on Rumble. And the same thing with YouTube. If you see this on YouTube and you haven't subscribed, hey, do that. Take a moment and subscribe with us and, and give the videos a thumbs up, which it really helps the algorithms. Uh, and it makes it, it makes it so that our channel can get uh, the word of God out to so many people. Take a moment and do that. I know, I know, it takes a little effort. I'm sorry, but do it anyway. Hey, this is Pastor Tom. Uh, a, a very soaked weekend uh, here in the great, uh, great state of North Carolina. I hope you guys are dry wherever you are. Just know Kim and I love you very much, and we will talk very, very soon. God bless you all.